Hi everyone, we are talking about 5 do's and don'ts for system design interviews. Now these tips are very useful if you have your system design interviews coming up soon or if you are just practicing and you want the maximum amount from each practice session. Now the first system design interview tip that I would like to give you is do not go into detail prematurely. This happens very often when you are drawing services and databases and you know clients that are going to be connecting to these. People get into one part of the system and go into very, very deep detail. For example, if I look at the client and I say that I'm going to be connecting to these services, sometimes people say that, all right, there's going to be a gateway here. Is this too much detail? Maybe not. But this is, I'm going to be using the HTTP protocol. And I'm going to be using TCP protocol. I'm going to be using UDP. Because I'm pretty sure of the network. How about the database? Well, no one is going to talk about the database. I think it's going to be Which is going to be using two databases, one for read only and the other one for write only. What's going to happen uh, with this kind of a flow is that you are going to be talking all the time. And that's not what you want in a system design interview. You're going to be talking for the majority of the time. But you want the interviewer to be giving feedback. Very often what happens with this is that when you go into detail and you take a flow which is not what the interviewer wants, they won't even stop you. They'll just let you run along and once you make the mistake, you'll need to backtrack and that's not just wasting time in your interview, that's also a negative point. Because in the real world, if you did this and you had to backtrack, that, that would cost money. right? So avoid this point, it's very important that you do not get into detail until and unless you're sure or you have asked that, what should I do? So a good way to actually talk about the same thing is, I'm going to be talking to all my services using a gateway. Yeah, this is reasonable. Wait for one second, wait for a response. And then say, it's going to be talking to this service using a protocol. Uh, I prefer HTTP because it's widely used and so the clients don't need to do something. But again, take that pause. If there's something important, it'll come up. Maybe the interview will direct you. If you're going to be talking about databases and they want details, mostly they're going to be talking about drawing an entity relation diagram. So you'll, you'll be defining your tables well. So that's how you go into detail. You, you wait for some time and you actually look for the first point uh, which needs detail for the system to be defined better. Now for the second point. The second point is that don't have a set architecture in mind. If you have something already thought out, you know, you have read some blog which says that this is a really good architecture, maybe MVC, maybe event driven, and you just say that, okay, I'm going to be having this architecture and I don't care about the requirements. I'm somehow going to fit the requirements into the, into the system. So if I'm a fan of publisher subscriber models, and I say there's going to be a publisher and subscriber here, which is the only way that services are going to be talking to each other, maybe it's not the best for the given scenario. So if you're doing this again, what could happen is the interviewer might take it upon, uh, upon themselves to actually break this architecture somehow. So the requirements <laughs> may change. In fact, very often that's, that's the thing that is done. It's to test your flexibility when you have something which you feel is really good and they throw requirements which are completely different. So don't have a very set architecture in mind. It happens often when we don't have time for system design interviews. We are just reading all blog posts and we see something really good and feel like, yeah, this, this is going to fit everywhere. That's not the case. You know, WhatsApp and Uber have very different architectures. Uh, the third one is actually a KISS, which is very famous amongst programmers. It's keep it simple, stupid. You don't want to pick up one point of the service and just go on you know, getting into more and more detail about this service. Like I'm going to have uh, maybe, I'm going to have a heartbeat server which is going to be talking to this. Specifically, I'm also going to be having uh, another database for analytics for this service. Um, you know, the more and more you get into this specific portion of the architecture, the more and more narrow your view is. So what I would suggest is take a step back, often enough, just take a step back and have a look at the entire architecture. Maybe some of the things that you're doing here, maybe the heartbeat, maybe the analytics, can be extended to the entire system. Uh, and very often what happens is if you, if you have a look at the di diagram that you're drawing, and if you see one part of the system, you know, huge, <laughs> and the other ones all tiny, thin, 
then it's a good idea. It's a good indicator that maybe your system either it needs change or it needs to become uh, more simplified. You can extract out components from one part and extend them to the other bits. The fourth point is probably the most common mistake made in system design interviews, and that is to make points without justifications. If you have nothing backing up what you just said, for example, I, I say that the database is going to be a NoSQL database, and I go even more concrete and say it's Cassandra. One logical question is why? Why do you want that? And many of us in, in these interviews, we feel the need to speak. We feel the need to actually make points continuously because it's, it's awkward. The silence that is between you explaining and the interviewer evaluating that is very awkward. So you might make a half-hearted comment on, hey, I can use Cassandra here. Or you might feel like, hey, Cassandra is really cool, so why not just add that to the system? Be sure about what you're speaking. If this uh, Cassandra database is not going to be working well here, that's going to be a negative point and that's going to be against you. So avoid speaking without thinking the points through. The final point is to be aware of current technologies. With this, what happens is if you draw a part of your system, which is, for example, the database, you can actually name the technology you're using in that database. So for example, if I say I'm going to be using a NoSQL database and we have already said Cassandra, you can also use Amazon DynamoDB and so on and so forth. What about a relational database, which is not like a NoSQL database? I can use MySQL, I can use Postgres. Another thing that you might use for load balancing is uh, Elastic Load Balancer. So you might use the Amazon architecture to give you this. For heartbeats, you might use Zookeeper. For this message queue, you might use RabbitMQ so on and so forth. But me being aware of these databases, these off-the-shelf solutions, shows that I'm knowledgeable and I'll probably take lesser time and lesser testing to implement my entire features. So these are the five important do's and don'ts for your system design interview. Uh, three pillars that I see our system design interview standing on are the first one being clarity of thought. So if you can express yourself clearly to your interviewer, you can do the same with your teammates. And that's a big plus point. The second one is flexibility. We talked about don't be stuck with one architecture and you know, roll with the punches. So flexibility is important when you're designing a system, system design interview. And the final pillar is knowledge. If you're aware of what's going on around the world and you're able to design a system successfully, then this system design interview is a success. So remember the five do's and don'ts that we have discussed over here. And I'll be seeing you next time. That's about actually designing a system from scratch. So we are going to be picking up something and building it from scratch. If you want notifications for that, you can subscribe. And if you like this video, hit the like button. I'll see you next time.